welcome to the Nexus podcast. Uh, today I'm excited. Uh, we get to talk with um, Storms Within. Uh, sorry, guys, had a little little moment here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> introduce yourself, guys, please. Uh, I'm Erica. I'm the lead singer. I'm Ron, the drummer. I'm Mike, the bass player. Uh, T.W., the guitar player. Awesome. So how was music introduced to you guys? Um, what influenced you to start doing music in your life? Well, that's a good one. Uh, so for me, uh, like bands wise, uh, like I've always been in music, like chorus, and I played violin when I was a kid. Um, and then band wise, actually, um, an ex-boyfriend of mine and... I had gotten asked if I was interested in being a part of the like reincarnation of this band. And I actually what didn't even sing, I played bass. So that's how it started and then like the bands just trickled together. <laughs> so after that. So that's how it worked for me. Uh, all right, well, I'll go next. Um for me, it was always just uh music was always around me uh, from my family and friends and um it just made me feel good, so I wanted to start creating it myself. Through high school and whatnot, I sang in choirs and things like that, but I didn't actually pick up an instrument um, until I was 13. I was supposed to play bass, oddly enough, but uh, went to a concert and saw a drum solo and seen how the crowd went nuts, and it resonated with me, so that's how I got my start. Mike? Oh, go ahead. All right, uh... How how I got started in the music? Was that the question? I'm sorry. Yes. Oh. Um, just uh, kind of like Ron exposed, you know, um, as a kid, you know, at school and uh, at home. My dad had a really good record collection, so I got exposed to the really good music, like Early Sabbath and Alice Cooper and a lot of heavier music at a very young age, and it just always resonated with me. And it's like, with, without even understanding what I liked and didn't like, I knew, like, I didn't care for country music or stuff like that. I didn't know why. I just, I was always, you know, leaning towards rock and, you know, the, the heavier kind of music. And just kind of took off from there, especially, you know, high school and started playing guitar and that and just fell in love with it. Uh, for me, uh, for me, my dad was a Johnny Cash fan, so that's all I listened to for the longest time. Um then I met some kid who had a Boston album. And when I heard that, I was like, ooh, this is, I like this. <laughs> and, uh, and then I um, hooked up with some friends, had, some, had guitars and stuff, and showed me how to play. And, uh, and as I got older, the heavier and heavier music I like. I like, I li- I like you guys' sound. Like, um, it, it's very familiar. I've, I've heard it before, but I, I just can't. Um, who would you guys say that you're inspired by? You know, that's hard because um, every single one of us is inspired by different things and every one of us is all eclectic when it comes to our music taste. But, I mean, I'll let them all answer um, individually. But, like, for vocally, for me, like, when I was younger, um, Amy Lee was, like, it for me. I wanted to sing, like, her, you know, and and maybe 10 years ago or so that's where I was more familiar with. Like I was very operatic and sing songy. Whereas now my voice is very, um, I, it's kind of gone with what's popular, I suppose, because now my voice is very similar to like what Lizzie Hale does or, um, what Dorothy does. Like I'm, I'm very raspy. I mean, even my speaking voice is so much lower than it was before. Um, and that's where I'm at now. You have a very nice grit to your voice. I, it, it's, uh, yeah, I, I really like, I really like it. But the music, everything meshed well together. Thank you. Yeah, the guys have a good sound. There, I'm, I'm the youngest one in the band, so I've, you know, my, I don't want to say like my voice is new sounding, but like I'm, I'm very attuned to like what's going on currently in like female rock and metal and the guys all have you know um uh, you know older influences where they pull from sabbath or they pull from metallica or they pull from sabotage and you know they have that like nasty gritty heavy you know rock and hard and hard hitting metal and and it just works out well for us 
Did I hit it well? Did I do, do good? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Covered, yeah, covered the what you said. <laughs> yeah, pretty much sums it up. What's the story behind the stage name, the band name? Uh, so when we were originally kicking this project off. Uh, we weren't sure where we were going to go with it. At first, it was um, like a cover band project because where we're from, uh, that's what makes money. Um, so we were in a cover band and, uh, we were like, you know, we really want to get back to writing. Cause before we did this cover band, we were all in a project together, but I didn't sing. I played bass. So, um, we decided that we wanted to start writing originals and it got to a point where we just needed to like separate the two bands. Um, and, uh, everything that I like to write about, I like to write about, um, topics that are, you know, I guess to go back to like the name is like storms within so things that settle in your mind that like could be debate heavily debatable. A lot of the music, I mean, honestly, um, and picking and choosing sides. And, uh, so we mold around, I don't even know so many ideas and storms within just ended up sticking. It's a, it's a good name. It's a good name. That <laughs> it's, it's, sketchy. Sketchy. it's sketchy. When I when I put you guys in the staff set there, everybody was like, "Ooh, I like the name," and everybody went to see. It. Yeah, and it's cool. It's like now you know uh, we've been a band for in nine years, going on ten years, and uh, in the beginning, you know, in the in the interwebs, you know, you'd search up Storm Within and you'd get like what storm's going on in Erie, Pennsylvania? You know, like, there, you wouldn't see anything about us, and it's cool, because now when you Google Storms Within, our music pops up first. So that was, like, a really cool milestone to get to, you know, even though we're not a, a huge band, but that when you Google Storms Within, like, that we pop up. Like, it's just, it's cool. It's a cool project. It, absolutely. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty cool to, to just at one point be able to see even like you say, you're not a popular band. You're not a, you guys have a good fan base. You guys uh, we you have some shows coming up. I'm sure that you're not going to have a big uh, issue. So like getting, tickets, <laughs> having people there. So, <laughs> well, as, as, as artists, what would you define success? Like what is success for you guys? Would it be booking big tours? Would it be, uh, I'll start because I'm sure everybody has uh, what they label as success differently. You know, I I guess for me, when you start off as a musician, it's always you want to be on that big tour that, you know, the band that you admire is on. Right. Like, that's probably yeah. what a lot of people think. Um, but I think when you finally get to a point where you have a fan base and you're doing well musically that your goals kind of change to where you're at. And that's where, I mean, at least I am. So, you know, like a year ago, I would have never imagined that we would have just released an album. That for me was the biggest thing and goal that I wanted to get done. I wanted us to get our music recorded. I wanted to be on streaming platforms and I wanted people to hear it. And that was, that was it for me. And now, you know, we have people every day that message us or you look at Spotify stats and you can see that people around the world are listening to our music. That still is hard for me to, like, take in that we have a, a huge fan base in Brazil. Like, I it's crazy to me. We're from Erie, Pennsylvania. Like, you know what I mean? There's people in Brazil listening to our music. That to me, that's success. So that that's my answer. I guess for me, um, just one step at a time. I mean, I'd eventually like to hit the, be on a big tour, something like that. But every little bit as we go, it just feels great. And just enjoy it as you go, you know, because eventually can't get yeah. to the, we can't go any farther. So just Absolutely. enjoy enjoy the ride. Uh, success for me is that people are, are liking what we're doing. You know, it's a great feeling to have people, as long as they want to, people want to keep coming seeing you live or listen to your music, buying it. To me, that's success. You know, it's, it's a great feeling that you come up with something, you write something original and people really dig it and they're just like, you get compliments. And, uh, I mean, yeah, there's the money aspect of it too, but realistically, I'm happy to people are liking what we're doing. So that's a, I'll chalk that up as a win. Yeah. For Absolutely. Sure. 
Yeah, I, I agree. You know, I I always wanted to when I first started out. You know, you want to get on that main stage. You want to play your hometown in that big uh, setting that you see your idols play on. Um, that was always a huge thing for me. But like Erica said, as as you progress, you start seeing your your uh, your dreams. You know, you start seeing things that are more realistic. Um, for for me, it was, you know, once we put the album out and then I saw it on the Internet and heard our music playing on the radio. And I went, wait a minute, that that's us. We're, we're on the radio. You know, it was like that was a huge goal that was accomplished. Um, getting people that come out and, you know, sing your music while you're playing, uh, you know, it, it's a huge thrill. So, I mean, you know, just to sum it up, like what they said, you know, every Every win is another is another game changer, and I'm anxious to see what what happens next with the next album coming out, and you know where we go and and who we can touch around the world. It would be awesome. See, I love asking this question because everybody has a different answer to success, and it it, it just shows that you don't have to define your success on somebody else's success. Like, make your own, you know, make your own goals, push. And do it. You guys are getting it done. Yeah, I mean, for real. Like, uh, we could we could make the uh, choice of being in a cover band or doing something that's more lucrative, cash wise. You know, if you wanted to make it around money, or you know, every single one of us could go and you know pursue. Uh, independent musician dream like our our other guitar player who's not here he does solo recordings for around the country like he did, he doesn't need to do this but he enjoys being in a band and wanting to write music and to play on a stage and you know that's that's all of us i think we all want to write original music and we want people to love what we're doing and not what other people are doing You guys all have the same thing in common. It's that love for music, that, that you know, oh, yeah. that drive. Um, who would be your inspiration as a musician? Like, growing up, like, you said Amy Lee. Uh, for you guys, who, who, who gave you, uh, you know, that, oh, I want to learn how to play like this, you know. Oh, I like this. I heard Johnny Cash earlier, too. Yeah, I like uh, Johnny Cash was my first idol. Um, when I heard UFOs album "Strangers in the Night," the live album, and Michael Shanker doing a solo, and uh, right there was, and then I eventually uh, um, "Sabotage" came in my life, and and Chris Oliva was my favorite guitar player. So those two were my favorite, and that's what inspired me to keep me going. Uh, for me, uh, I'll never forget it. The first time I've ever wanted to play, um, I remember walking through a store with my mother, and I saw a Kiss album, and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. Uh, I bugged her, bugged her, bugged her, finally got the album, went home, listened to it on a little record player, and started watching every TV show I could watch, uh, try to emulate them, try, you know, try to just become what they were, and... For me, it, it was definitely Peter Chris, and then, you know, Vinny Apice, and then Tommy Lee. That that was like the, the three main influences I had. And then, of course, Nico from Iron Maiden came along, and I was just like, whoa, here's another aspect. But um, I'm always open to trying to learn different techniques, and I admire every single drummer that gets out, gets out there and does it. It takes a lot of guts to do what any one of us do. So, you know, I, I try to learn something from every drummer I see. Same here. I try to pull from my influences from everywhere. Uh, a lot of Sabbath for me. Uh, Metallica was huge. Like Bruce said, Iron Maiden. I, I mean, then I draw also from a lot of like hardcore punk I, li I love to listen to. That To me, I heard that, like the Ramones, Misfits, and it's like, hey, I can play that. And that kind of, it was approachable for me, and it just, you know, I kind of like a, a lot, you know, a lot of different genres, you know, usually heavy, like I said, hardcore punk, metal, thrash, death metal. I mean, just kind of, I try to draw from some of my favorite bands there, you know, maybe not copy, but it's sort of, you know, in the style of. And just, just get an inspiration. 
Oh yeah, this, this, to, still to this day, that's what I do. I listen to something, and something will catch my ear, and I'm like, huh, you know, it's kind of give you a little inspiration for something original. You know? Absolutely. Speaking of original, let's uh, take a break and listen to one of your songs. We've just listened to your first single, Mayhem, right? Yes. Creative process. Um, what got the juice flowing? What got you guys all together? Wrote the lyrics. G -g -g give it to me. What's up with this song? So uh, this song, when it was written, uh, was the was like the the brainchild of like the whole project. This is like what kicked us off writing original music in the first place. So. Um, at the time, uh, for being, if I'm being honest, uh, I was having a little bit of issues with someone and I figured that, you know, I, instead of, you know, now everything goes on social media, I just wrote down the lyrics and, um, Tom would noodle with this riff all the time and, and it ended up being, you know, we, we just like put the lyrics down to the, 
uh, you know, to the music and, you know, cause the songs essentially just, you know, it's about standing up for yourself and, um, that you're not going to back down. And that's, that's what the song's about in general, but it was just us noodling around and monkeying around in the beginning, uh, you know, writing the first original song we wrote. Yeah. We used to play that song in our covers when we were in a cover band. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've, we throw that song in there. And it's funny, except after the set we did with that song in there, people ask us, well, what cover was that? That was a really good song. Right. I'm like, that's ours. <laughs> yeah. That feels good, right? Yes. When you can, like, play your song and they're like, wow, and nobody can, like, you know that it's actually, like, it's a real compliment because they didn't know it was you. Yeah, you know? it was cool. We did the, we did that for a little while. There was a couple of them that we, we were doing the cover gig, you know, to make money, and... um and then we started writing, and the more we wrote, the more we realized that that was what we wanted to do. I mean, the cover, the covers are fun. The you know, it, it's, but when you can start writing your own and, and putting your own music out there and your inspiration, for sure. I think you know, all of us like uh, Mike. Steam Driver was a cover band, or are, is a cover band, aren't they? Yep. Yep. So all, all of us, Mike joined us uh, within the last year from a cover band. And, uh, you know, it just that's just the way that Erie is. Um, that's where you can make, you know, some people can make a lot of money. Some can, people can make a little bit of money. And, you know, I think that's where a lot of people end up uh, at some juncture or another just because you're you're like, oh, yeah, I'll join or I'll, I need something to do or whatever. And um, I think that now that like the it's we're like post COVID a lot of people are wanting to get more creative. Um, Cause uh, like a year ago or so there really was only a handful of bands in our area that were, you know, willing to play shows or that were writing original music or whatever. And then it's just like blown up over the last year. So it's good to see that people's creative sides are coming back out. Well, everybody's getting out of that. You know, we, we got stuck in the house for so long. I, I'm originally from Montreal, Canada. Um, um, oh, gosh. Okay. Like 8 p.m. curfews. We have like we had all all of that stuff, all of the good stuff. And it, it lasted a long time. I think I think they just stopped wearing masks or there may might be. St- I don't know if they're still wearing, uh, you know, so it's. uh uh, the world since COVID, everything kind of changed. Everything, social media took a big twist in all of that. Yeah. Uh, as soon as COVID hit, uh, I was in a band that was actually remote. I was in Canada. The guys are in the U.S. I had featured people in the U.K. Like the, that. That was the big pastime. That that was the hobbies that we were. You know, we couldn't do well. We couldn't. 8 p.m. curfew. What do you want to do at 8 p.m. Like on a Saturday night? So yeah. make music. Just yeah. make music. Now everybody's back to doing shows, which is really nice. I, I miss going to see shows, especially indie bands like unsigned. Like where you don't have to pay two hundred dollars to see an artist. Like, oh, right. Yeah. I always tell everybody like I, I don't understand why you guys can pay like two hundred, three hundred dollars to see those artists, but to put like twenty five bucks, usually even less than that, ten bucks some shows, and, yeah. and you could see like four or five indie bands, like good bands. So. We do art yeah. free. <laughs> we do a lot of the shows a lot of the shows we do we do for free or and we usually pay for sound out of pocket I believe um, pro bono is the term for that pro bono <laughs> we are pro bono workers um, I mean realistically a big thing is and I feel at least I mean and it may not just be in our area but I can I can attest to the Erie and surrounding areas we'll say as there's a generational gap um, there's a huge generational gap where there are, you know, uh, and I'm not, I'm the, I don't want to sound disrespectful, okay, but there's the guys that are the old heads, like the dudes that are in the band, where those guys are the tried and true. They'll come out, they'll come out to every show, they'll pay the covers, or they'll come and support, whatever the case may be. Then there are the young guns, where there's these, you know, the 20 year olds and things of that nature that are all, we played several shows with the younger bands and, you know, and they show up, crowds show up, but there's this weird generational gap where I'm at in my thirties 
and it's just like these millennials don't want to go do anything like that. And I get it because everybody's got kids or they've got responsibilities and everybody's working to live right now. Um, yes. So it is so hard to get that gap to come out to shows. That's why turning your social media presence into people at shows is so huge. Like that's, that's big. So if you can get your social media presence to be people who are actual fans that will come to your shows, that's, that's like pivotal right now. I mean, that's what we're trying to do. So if we have to do a couple of shows that are free and then, you know, continue as the year goes on to do whatever. I mean, all of the shows that we have scheduled for the rest of the year are paid gigs. So now the, now the venues are paying us to ha- put on these shows. So, but not every venue is like that, but it's getting to that point. Um, and I guess you were talking, you know, you're talking about success earlier, getting to that point where you can guarantee bodies. But hopefully when you guys are doing those free shows, hopefully your fans are buying merch, you know, merch, merch is a really good way to help the band. Streaming is really awesome, but it doesn't pay the bills. Right. Um, it's yeah, really nice to see those numbers. I, I mean, don't stop streaming. That's not what I'm telling, you know, like keep streaming, yeah. but uh, you want to support. Even if you got $5, buy a ticket. Just buy one of those stickers. Most of the bands like have a sticker, have a cozy, have a for $5. All day. Yeah. Uh, there's drink out, one, drink, there's a- one beer. Cut it out. Get yourself some merch. <laughs> Go buy a sticker. Yeah. Uh, there's a picture of me on uh, that somebody had gotten it, and it was like a perfect reaction shot that when we did our album release party in January, it was like our guitar player Dave had come up to me and told me what we made that night, and the sheer shock in the picture on my face is probably one of my favorite pictures ever. Cause I, you know, we don't, we don't make money. We do this cause we love it. And when he told us how much we made, I mean, literally I shit myself. Like I could not even compute what we like. We almost sold out of t-shirts. We sold more than half of the albums, physical copies, not just, you know, like you're saying streams, like physical copies of the albums. And we sold out of, I don't even know, a whole bunch of merch. We had to reorder. Like, it was just, it was fantastic. So you're 100% right when you say that that benefits the band, because it does. Yeah, and then it helps you guys. You guys can go back to the studio, which you guys are going to be doing soon. <laughs> well, you know, if everything goes well, but, you know. Yeah, we're scheduled, we're scheduled to go back in May, so... Um, we've got a couple songs that are brewing, um, and that, that we were actually working on last night at our practice. And then we've got ideas for, um, one, one video for sure is going to be, uh, I don't even know whether or not I can, should I say anything about it? <laughs> like, we haven't we'll talked so much. The confidentiality of it, but we'll the, next, much. the next single is going to have a music video and it's going to be like a very well thought out concept video. It's not just going to be, you know, us performing and being recorded as a band. Like it's going to be a very well thought out video. So, uh, that's what we've got on the horizon when we go back into the studio. So that'll be really fun. Another goal. Uh, I'm happy bands are are coming back with those videos, you know, not just the the the, the lyric video or just the bands, you know, standing in front. COVID brought us so many, and we did one too with the band videos of people sitting in their corners in their like bad bedroom, one in the kitchen. And, you know, you make a video like that because you can't meet up to make the video. So it's nice to see uh, uh, the MTV. Uh, the, MTV years coming back with all the indie bands that are making these videos. Like my, we're my guilty. Facebook. We're guilty of it. We did two in the studio. So <laughs> see? See? this next one's going to be, this next one's going to be a very well concept thought out concept video. So do you guys come from musical families or are you like the, you know, random person out? I, I am, I am the first and only, uh, musical person in my family. Uh, I, think maybe uh, a kid may be going in that direction, but as for brothers, sisters, parents, anything like that, none of them are musical. Yeah, same, same here. I'm the only one that's musical. I think I had an older grandparent or something that played the piano or something. Um, I know my oldest daughter played the piano, 
But other than that, just just me. I'm the only one of my kind in my family. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. I hate to follow suit, but really, I'm the only one who plays an instrument that I know of in my family. So you guys are all the first ones. Hopefully, uh, you know, down the line there will be more. But for now, you guys reign and you hold the title of the only ones in your family that can play an yeah. instrument. I'm, I'm the same way. I mean, I have a few cousins that can sing a little bit. Nobody wanting to do it seriously out of the shower, so. <laughs> Truth. So for the coming months, we have a new single. We have later on the studio. Um, you also, you guys have shows, right? Lots. Lots of them. Go ahead. Let us know where, when, how, how much. Okay, let's see if I can think. Um, so April's a big month for us. Um, we've got four shows, three of which in Erie, which is against like our unwritten rule. Um, we like to only play shows in Erie once every six months because, um, you know, it's like a, an original band or a touring band. You know, you don't want to, you wouldn't want to go back and see them repeatedly. So we try not to do that. However, um, we had two opportunities that we just couldn't turn down so with that said um april 1st we're going to be playing at philly on the rocks which is like the hot spot for um for erie for original music so uh that's actually a promoter based show um dread metal productions is putting that on um that's april 1st um i believe it's six dollars um and i think doors open at seven starts at eight or eight nine something like that all the information is on our facebook page um, for all these shows. What Facebook page can we find you at? Storm, if you, Storms Within? Yeah, if you search up Storms Within, um, you should be able to find us because uh, I don't think there's anything else that's related to that, like just Storms Within. Uh, Facebook.com slash Storms Within. Um, also, if you go to uh, StormsWithinOfficial.com, that has all of our events on it as well. That's our official website, and that's updated regularly. So that has everything. Um we have a huge show, and it will be, unfortunately, our last at the Sand Bar in Erie, Pennsylvania, um, on April 14th. That is a free show, no cover, um, and we've got five bands. It'll be uh, the Bong Mongrels from Erie, Joe Nameless from Erie Albion. Um, then we have Hybrid Nation traveling up here from Columbus, Ohio. Um, and we have Wrath Icon traveling here from Akron, Ohio, and us. Um, that'll be a huge show. That hopefully will be a good one. All of our sandbar shows have been great turnouts. So hoping for our last one there ever that it'll be awesome. Um, and then let me think. There's a lot. Uh, the following weekend on April 21st, we're actually going to be in Pittsburgh. Uh, we're playing at a venue called the Sub Alpine Society. Um, and it's a two-day like Metal Massacre Festival. Um, and I think tickets are $15 a day or 20 for the weekend. Um, and we're playing with our good buddies in Animus from Butler, Pennsylvania. Uh, there's Faith and Failure, Onion, oh boy, Drown the Deep. And there's another band, gosh, Shattered Souls. Um, and... Uh, Got a good memory, guys. I mean... <laughs> listen... Wow. When the best thing about uh, being me is I do all of our social media. So I'm like constantly in contact with bands and promoters and um, talking with people and scheduling and all the things. So um, it's good. It works out. And then um, we've got one last show in April. It's the 29th at a place called the Raskeller Cafe here in Erie. It is the first time that they are ever having original music there. Um, and it's with us, a local legend, Mel Sangre, um, stand-up great dudes, so that'll be fun. And then a new, newer uh, punk band, uh, Young Guns, uh, Grim Grin. So um, we're hoping all of those shows end up going splendid and getting bodies out and supporting and showing these venues that we're ready to rock. So talking about shows and, you know, what happens when you get in front of the crowd? Like, do you, do you get filled with that energy? Do you um, kind of zone out? You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, uh, I know if I sing in front of a crowd, I usually kind of like 
like my mind wanders and then I come back to myself and I'm like, oh, you know, like it's like I scare myself that there's so many people all of a sudden, but been there the whole time. But, but you know, but. I'll let you guys answer first. Man, I'm, I'm like you. <laughs> Same thing. I zone out a little bit. I was like, oh, wow, there is a lot of people here. <laughs> Where did they come from? You know, I'll do the same thing. I zone out and just have a good time. Yeah, I typically yeah. see the crowd because uh, <laughs> I have everybody in front of me and usually lights or whatever. But when I do see the crowd, I'm like, wow, you know, give, you get that energy. And then I look at my bandmates and we feed off of one another's energy. So if it's going good, it's going great. So, uh Yeah. Yeah, same here. I feed off the crap. People are into it. It makes you feel good. And but yeah, my mind wanders too when you start thinking like, oh, what are we having for dinner tomorrow? And, oh, <laughs> shit. lose my uh, pulse in the summer for a second, but <laughs> but I always come back around to it. You know, it's uh, this it makes it more fun when you can see people. Get, you can tell if they're really into it or you know just yeah. talking and drinking or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. I I agree with them. I. I don't know. Uh, mine's, mine's in between, I guess, because in my mind, I want to give a hell of a show to every crowd that we play, even if, you know, it's the one person in the room or a hundred people kind of motto, right? But realistically, the more people that are into it and the more people that are bobbing heads, the, the wilder I will get. So, you know, that's, that's yeah. what, that's the way I am. The more people that are like, they're bobbing their heads into it. I, I get more excitable. So, um, that usually goes well for me when there's, when there's more, but regardless, I'm going to sing my heart out and, uh, and, and show them what we're about. And don't take, uh, don't take a selfie without you eating it. No, <laughs> that guy learned quick. That guy learned. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go listen to the end game and we'll be right back. Storms Within. We just listened to End Games. Um, again, um, 
the famous question I always come back to it every time we listen to a song. Um, but what is the song about? Uh, wrote it. Like how 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 did it happen? Oh, I think musically it was just it was our paranoid. I guess I just came up with kind of a little riff, something to as a filler. Because uh, we just wanted to write another song, something real quick. I mean, we had it written in partly half a practice. Mm-hmm. Musically, yeah. the music, it was quick. It was just a little filler thing and um, never thought it'd be one of our better songs. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was honestly surprising. Because um, it wasn't even, it wasn't even supposed to be a single release, to be honest. Um, we had lined up differently on how we were going to release the music that we wanted to before the album came out. Um, but I think it just ended up coming that this one was, this one had been produced and mastered first. Um, and not only that, but once we were in the studio um, and we started, you know, you add, adding the final touches to how it sounded, we're like, fuck, that's good stuff. So we just ended up, rolling with that one I, and I know there was a different one that we were contemplating dropping but um it actually ended up being the best single release we've had I mean Loyalty Lies is still doing good and it's new um but Endgame just took off I mean that's the one that really got everything going um but the song itself is about um ending a shitty relationship so that's the obviously the end game part of it is uh, you know, getting getting to the end of the issue and you being fed up and 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 just ending things. So, um, you know, like if when you listen to it, you can hear it. it's very angsty and, um, you know, the songs about being done and packing your bags up and getting out. You know, so um, I think that that resonates with a lot of people. I think that's why uh, it ended up taking off and doing as well as it did. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody can, most everybody can relate to that. Like mm-hmm. most everybody. Uh, yeah. How do you, how do you guys write? Everybody writes their own part. Uh, what what gets written first? Do we get the guitar riff first, and then um, you build on that? Um, yeah, I usually bring something mm-hmm. to the. I mean, before Mike joined, because Mike writes with us now, um, I would bring in uh, some riffs, and then me and Ron would just try to get some kind of structure of the song. And uh, Erica just sits down and writes along with us with the lyrics. And um, that's basically how it now, now the mic's in the band. Uh, we take turns more or less coming in with uh, different riffs, and then we just dissect them and figure out, you know, what works, what doesn't work. And, uh, I mean, this is new because Mike just joined recently, so <laughs> but, it's, but it's working out pretty good. I mean, got three yeah. songs. we got three songs now, and... Yeah, we got good chemistry. I think it's gonna it's gonna work out good that way. That you know, you come in with something, you're know, like, I got this. I don't know where to go with it. And then, hey, how about this? How about that? And it just, you know, it goes back to us all coming from different backgrounds, different influences. It really, when you mesh it together, it, there you go. It's something new, and it's you know, it's exciting. You know, for you know, for these guys and me too. You know, because it's like, hey, now I'm you know. It's a well, might be sent in too, you know, and it's it's a, a different pre- it's fresh air, you know. It just absolutely. I mean, I wrote I wrote all the songs in the last album, and it just kind of feel like I'm kind of in a rut a little bit, you know. And yeah, and Mike comes in and just like, oh, okay, now he's inspiring me more. Well, so. like like you guys were saying before, everybody's inspired by somebody else. Everybody brings something different to this. So if you add yeah. another person, you add another perspective, you add another element. Yeah. So he's bringing stuff, you know, to you guys, and luckily it all meshed together, you know. Like it's awesome because it's different. Like uh, I mean, you're definitely going to be able to hear from the first album to the second album the the difference. I mean, it's not these three songs that we just wrote are a not only heavier, um, but just sound wise they're different which is good um but i mean like all all day all day today i've had the last song that we just finished like literally yesterday in my head so you know what i mean like it's it's good it's good stuff like it's stuck in my head on repeat so that's a good thing that's a good Mm -hmm. thing 
What's the best piece of advice another musician ever gave you? Get in. It's okay to make mistakes. Just keep playing through it. Don't stop. <laughs> make sure Everybody you have a noise gate. That's how you recover from it. That matters. Make sure you have a noise gate. <laughs> that's my thing. Learn to play with your band members and not by emotion. Because otherwise, I get a dirty look from Tom. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I get very passionate about it. I, I get into the feeling of it, and I could tend to go off to the races, and then, you know, Tom has to kick me back in place. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I also just had to think about it. Uh, I would say, I would say for me, it's give yourself more credit than you would give yourself generally. Like, for me, when I started, I, I would beat myself up because I felt like I wasn't doing good enough or I wasn't enough. Um, and like when, when we had first started, I mean, I would literally, when we would have band practice, I would practice like I was on stage at practice because I was so self-conscious that like it just wasn't going to be good enough. So like I had like I literally had a little notepad. I had everything written out, like what I was going to say in between songs and everything was scripted because I was so nervous that it wasn't going to be good. And now that I'm a seasoned musician, if you will, um, I like fly by the seat of my pants and with what's going on and what the interaction is and what people are thinking and what people are saying and joking and, you know what I mean? Trying to be personable, which that's been my biggest compliment after shows is like people are just drawn to you people just watch you and that's what I want so you know when you're first starting off don't beat yourself up that you're not perfect or you're not where you want to be because you'll get there that's, that's very true very true we all evolve we, we all get better with time um, it's experience it's uh, you know from the first podcast to now uh, I mean, my nerves are already better. Um, my first podcast, I was like, okay, guys, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I, you know, now I'm a little bit better. Like my phone, the headphones, and I was like, it's okay. I'll figure it out. First podcast, I would have been like, oh, no, my life is over. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're, you're doing fantastic. And yeah, what you're doing in the music community is huge. So I, that's the same thing. Don't beat yourself up. We all, we all learn. There's all a curve. There's, you know. Exactly, exactly. The community's great. I mean, the the bands that I'm meeting, the people that I, I'm interacting with, uh, it, it's nice to see a different side, uh, especially of the rock community, of the metal community. You know, everybody thinks the metal guys are all like big beasts. And, and I was talking with uh, Let the Day Perish, and they were so sweet. They're coming in for the mental health week that I'm doing. And uh, you listen to their music, and I'm like, ooh, you know, and <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does music help you in other areas of your life? Hell yeah, girl. Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, like literally yesterday, I, I, and I told the guys this. Yesterday I had such a shitty day at work. Like all of us work. Um, and, uh, you know, unfortunately this can't be our full time jobs yet. Uh, and I had such a shitty day and I just, I, I literally just laid down with headphones in my ears for like a half hour, just like zenning out. And then I came downstairs cause all the guys were here and they were ready for, you know, to, to practice. And I'm like, sorry guys, I just needed a few minutes to zen out. And then we started practice and we had a banging ass practice. Uh, music is literally involved in every facet of my life, always. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, at, li between listening to it, writing, performing, going to the studio, us having practices, having gigs, um, it's, it's constant. So for me, like, it's just, uh, you know, it's an everyday, in every facet of my life kind of thing. Yeah, I couldn't survive without music. I, I, whether it would be writing or playing or just sitting back and appreciating what someone else did uh, gets me through the highest of highs, the lowest of lows, and everything in between. Especially like Derek I said, you know, you have a shit day at work and you just you just want to rip your hair out. It's like, all right, let me zen out and you know, I'll put something on either to raise my spirits or something to just calm me down. Yeah, it's the same. It's like my anger management. You know, yeah. I have to have, I have, yeah. to have music on. 
I get so sometimes I get so stressed out and just angry. It's the music on and goes away. I agree. Same here. That this how I deal with things and uh, <laughs> got, me, got me through every uh, rough spot in my life up to this point. And yeah, the love for it, playing and listening to it, you know, it just never gets old for me. That's 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 the thing. My when I meet new people is always you know I'm, send me some music. You know, there's a lot to tell about somebody about if you listen to their playlist. I mean, and not the playlist you're going to share on social media. I'm talking about that playlist that you don't share that has, like, Hanson and, like, uh, <laughs> Spice Girls. You know what I mean? Like, that uh, one. Uh, that's Tom's uh, favorite one. That's Tom's list. Yeah, Tom's got a Spice yeah, Girl. Hey, I, 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 I love 21 Pilots. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the but, fame meme is that my playlist will tell you more about me than anything else. Everybody has a soundtrack. It would be nice if you could hear the soundtrack to everybody's life, you know, like. Yeah, then you know who you need to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't like your music. That's why it's not going to be. Oh, boy, that's funny. What do you guys like the most about your life as a musician? <sighs> you know, uh when it boils down to all of it is the dudes. Um, I, the guys that are in my band are literally like the best dudes ever. And, uh, I mean, even, even the ones that ha- were in before, like, uh, Jaden and, uh, and Tiffany, I mean, we've had nobody leave the band in like, like ill will. Um, everybody had to leave for, you know, family problems or whatever the case may be. But like, it's just nice when you can come together with a group of people and play music or write music or whatever the case may be, and there's no animosity, there's no problems, there's no issues, there's no bullshit, there's no, you know what I mean, there's no ego, it's, well, there's all the ego, but um, <laughs> that's that's just me and Tom all the time. Well, I lied, it's probably Dave more Dave. than anybody now. <laughs> Um, but you know what I mean? Like, I, it's just such a great group of guys that I get to play with every week, and it's it's fantastic. I don't know that anything else would be worth it if you weren't playing with people that you, you know, cared about. Sure. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. That's the same thing. It's like another family, you know. Just I played some bad bands where I just can't stand people, but this one probably like the best group of people I've ever jammed with. They're they're my family. That that's just the only way I can describe. Um, you know, you you get to create something from nothing with your family, your, your closest of people, and then you go to play it and you get to perform it and showcase what we made. And, you know, for my aspect of it, I look at it this way. Eric is the show, we're the soundtrack. And for us to be able to create that and to allow her to blossom and do her thing, that's like the greatest thing for me is being able to showcase each one of my family members' talents and hard work. I think it's important to be like a family, especially if you guys go tour and, you know, like you have to leave your actual family, family behind, like at least right. fun to get along with five people that are on your tour bus with you, you know, well, all that, all that, all that ego, all that ego, all that ego, you need two tour bus. <laughs> what do you got, Mike? You got something different? Playing music that people like, you know, that you, you created is just, that's the best feeling for me. You know, it's something originally you made, and that's just a, a special feeling, you know. And I played with a few different, you know, different bands and that, and it's, we definitely have a good chemistry with everyone, that everyone gets along and, and, res- and is respectful of each other, too, of, you know, what's going on in your private lives and, and, that, and that. And that goes a long way, you know, really. You know, like, it's not like, yeah, hey, I got something going on. Hey, we don't give a shit. You got to play. That's not the case. Yeah. But, you know, and, uh, and that really goes a long way, you know. I mean, he must love you guys. He put, like, his good shirt on today, he said. So, you know. <laughs> oh, boy. It's, it's, my, it's my good work T-shirt. <laughs> 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 oh, that was a good one. <laughs> so something happened exciting for you guys in January. You released your album, Minds of the Wicked. How long did it take to write it? 
years, <laughs> years. Uh, so, so long, 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 long story short is this year, this summer will be storms within will be a ban for nine years. Now that's not, I'm not saying that it's been nine years straight. We've all, there's been breaks. We've done different projects. There were cover bands in between there, but the, the storms within has been together for nine years. So last year, um, you know, after COVID and a, everything was kind of dissolving. It, I told the guys, I'm like, listen, we've fucked around and we've done, you know, a few little short dentally things and we had a few songs recorded and whatnot. I'm like, but we need to put our money where our mouth is and put something out that's worthy of where we are. Um, and at the time, uh, we were like in between bass players. So it was, it was Tom, Ron, myself, and Dave who were recording. Um, and then in the middle of the recording process is when Mike joined. Um, so the album's a little bit wishy-washy with, you know, like, obviously we had already spent tons of money and had been in the studio for a few months when Mike joined. But as soon as he was ready to go, we're like, dude, you need to be recording these songs and be on this album with us because um, he's as much of a part of it you know, as we are. Um, but the song, the, the album itself is a culmination of all of the songs that were worthy of continuing on and playing. Um, because we've written, you know, like a dozen other songs that just, you know, didn't, we didn't feel were, uh, suitable to carry over onto an album. Um, so we kind of like picked what we wanted to do, picked the strongest songs that we wanted to get onto a full length, um, and we just started, and that's really where it went. How many songs do you have on the album? There's 12. 12. Yeah, there's 12 songs. I saw the little panic in her eyes there. Uh, <laughs> like, there's 12, but we recorded 14. There's 12. I always want to say 14, so I have to stop and think, because we recorded 14. But we only twelve are on the album. Yeah, <laughs> we're missing two. Where are they? Where are they? Oh, uh, so they were. We had some studio time left after we recorded our last music video, and um, they're fuck around and find out songs. So uh, <laughs> one one will be released very soon. Uh, we're going into the studio tomorrow to finish mastering it. Um, and then uh, it'll probably be released mid-April. And then the other song, we're going to do just a bullshit video, too, because it'll get us some streams. So I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> find out. <laughs> Marketing, promotion, and everything is important. Everything yeah. is part of the game now. Uh, that's what I was talking when I was uh, interviewing statues. We were talking about, you know, back in... 2000 back in the street teams like we didn't have internet back then you grab a bunch of sticker and walk around the, the 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 city and slap your sticker everywhere and hope that people would come see you jam somewhere in the I dive literally bar. can't remember what we were talking about but like within the last week or so we we're talking about back in you know, back in the day, as it, as it were, you had to take your flyers and put them in windshields. Oh, you remember doing that all the time. Yeah. Going down to the clubs and just sticking them in all the cars. Yep. Yep. Now you just have to open your phone and post. Social media changed the game. If you don't know how to navigate social media, if you don't know, like right now, TikTok, I have no clue how to TikTok. I'm, I'm not a TikTok person. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with Facebook, but other than TikTok's, that, TikTok's TikTok's the thing right now. Um, I wouldn't it, I wouldn't invest a lot into it until you see whether or not it's going to get banned. Because if uh, Congress ends up banning it, there's no point in putting time into it. A lot can happen, right? Very true. A very important question that I ask all my guests when we finish the interviews. Oh, if you had the chance to sit down with a younger version of yourself. Hmm. What would you tell yourself? Oh, Mike gets this one first. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, I would say don't drink so much. <laughs> that's, that's my answer. <laughs> don't drink so much. That was my answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the most I could give my younger self. 
Oh my god! <laughs> That's funny. You stole my answer. <laughs> no, Ron, you can go next. All right. Um, don't drink so much. I would probably tell myself, don't be so limited early on when you're learning my instrument because I regret not learning different styles sooner. So don't be so narrow-minded when it comes to your instrument. Always look to learn. So mine would be, I think it would be something along the line of what you're doing is is just fine. Because when I was younger, like, like, you know, earlier on in the interview, you had said, you know, about music. And I... It was just like the ugly duckling, you know, like I was the one that always had chorus concerts or orchestra, you know, um, concerts. And I was always the one that was the oddball. I wasn't this one in sports and stuff that, you know, the path you're on is OK. Like, just continue doing what you love and it's fine because I'm not a big drinker. <laughs> so don't drink that much. You know. I'm not in on your horizons. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, before before I let you guys go, we're gonna have one last song playing as the show finishes. Um, I think we said loyalty lights, right? Yeah. So before we go, because I won't be able to ask you guys after, what's the song about? So um, Loyalty Lies was um, written to be a dual-edged sword, um, which I love because a lot of people think that it's uh, again about like. A shitty relationship and where your loyalty lies when all things rest in the end. Um, but I actually wrote this song about um, a musical project that had happened and that I was pushed to make a decision to be, you know, to, to take a decision one way or another. Um, but it resonates with me that way. Um, but it was written to where it seems like it's the end, like, um, you know, it's it's in a relationship asking where your where your loyalty lies in everything that's going on and you know where your where your heart is. Um, but like I said, I wrote it about where does my loyalty lies, as in do I pick somebody that chooses wants me to choose an ultimatum, or do I pick somebody who genuine genuinely wants me to be involved in write music and things of that nature. So it's another one of those. Which did you take? There was I, took the, I took the fucking kick ass project <laughs> is what I did. <laughs> you have to say to fuck around and find out they found out. They found out. They <laughs> fucked around and found out real quick. <laughs> so we got the fucking fuck around and find out songs coming out too soon, right? There's one yeah, out baby. Out soon. <laughs> it was amazing to have you guys on uh the podcast. Uh, I'm going to be doing little callbacks for later on episodes when we're going to be like going live because that's a new project that we're going to have a bunch of see that 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 would be my advice as my as my younger self is your idea is not stupid. Do it. Fuck yeah. Right. So we're going to start a little video series too. I'm going to have bonus episodes like in April we're going mental health. So I'll keep you guys updated if you guys would like to maybe be part of some of those uh, special episodes. We're going to cover music. We're going to cover songwriting. Uh, so whatever something yeah, interesting. Keep, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Keep, us in your, keep us in your pocket and on your list. We'd, we'd love to help you with, with anything you're trying to aspire to do. Awesome. Cool. I appreciate you guys and I thank you guys for being on the show. We're going to go right ahead. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. We're going to go right ahead and listen to Loyalty Lives as we're going out. Thanks for listening to the podcast, guys. All right. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.